Good evening. Now, the United Nations Environment Assembly, UNEA, the world's foremost environmental decision-making body, kicked off yesterday here in Nairobi. Representatives of the 193 member states of the United Nations, as well as business leaders, civil society, and environmentalists from around the world have come together in person and online for the resumed fifth session of the assembly, dubbed UNEA 5.2. Now, outlines of what to expect at the assembly include progress on halting plastic pollution, stopping harmful chemicals in agriculture, and deploying nature to find sustainable development solutions and on the sidelines of that our conversation tonight here on front row is focused on environmental conservation many thanks for joining us my name is Sharon Omani you can engage us on our social media pages at KTN news you can talk to me directly at Sharon underscore Momani using the hashtag front row and I'll be sampling your thoughts on this if you have any questions for our panel you are very welcome to shoot them now, I'll be conducting this conversation with a high-level panel that have joined me in studio. And I'm here with Dr. Ayub Masharia, who is the Director of Environmental um, and Awareness, Education and Awareness at the Ministry of Environment and Forestry. He's in our other side of studio. He'll be joining us also in this conversation. But to my immediate left is Mr. Kizito Wangalwa. Mr. Kizito is the Director, Committees and Programs at the Council of Governors. He's also former uh, Deputy Governor of Busia uh, County. And I'm also joined in studio by Dr. Catherine Maisi, who is the acting deputy director in charge of environmental education and awareness at NEMA, that is the National Environment Management Authority. Uh, last but not least, who's also in our other studio, is Dr. Kalua Green. Dr. Kalua Green is an environmentalist and an entrepreneur, also the founder and chairperson of Green Africa Foundation, a very able panel of great minds on matters conversation that are joining me for this conversation uh, tonight. But before we delve right into that conversation, the latest report from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change shows that human-induced climate change is causing disruption in nature and is affecting the lives of billions of people around the world. Now, in order to address some of these issues, uh, the first session of the UNEA 5.2 began in Nairobi following weeks of committee discussions with various delegates making their submissions. Uh, let's take a look at this story done by my colleague Sada Hassan. In the last few years, an increase in droughts, floods and heat waves has been noticed globally. As a result, different species of animals have become extinct, nature bearing the brunt of human actions. Very strong uh, statement. Uh... Speaking today during the first session of the resumed in-person sessions of UNEA meetings, Cabinet Secretary for Environment has advocated for practical solutions to end plastic pollution. We should go beyond resolutions. We should ask ourselves whether and to what extent and in what manner those resolutions have been converted into real action on the ground. Other delegates had similar submissions. The theme of strengthening action for nature to achieve the sustainable development goals is both timely and relevant. The true nature of young people's power is often overlooked. We have true cognitive, social and organizational power to use today. The Director General of UNEP, Inga Anderson, and the President of UNEA, Espen Bath, have firm beliefs that by the end of UNEA sessions and UNEP at 50 celebrations, positive resolutions will be arrived at. We will have something truly historic on our hands because we all know that an agreement will only count if it is legally binding. The world is now following keenly on Russia's invasion of Ukraine and delegates could not steer away from this conversation. The European Union had a firm warning. The EU and its member states reiterate their demand that Russia immediately ceases military actions, unconditionally withdraws all forces and military equipment from the entire territory of Ukraine and fully respects Ukraine's territorial integrity. But the Russian delegate could not fail to reply. Those 
who are today concerned with the fate of Kyiv regime and the environmental impact of the operation never noticed the sufferings of the people in Donbas being killed by the Ukraine military and neo-Nazi groups. This is hypocrisy. The next three days will be critical as resolutions passed will affect the progress of restoring nature. About 8 billion tons of plastics is released to the environment yearly, and this ends up in our environment. As part of the resolutions of this UNIA 5.2 meeting is to see sustainable solutions for issues affecting us. Saad Hassan, KTN News, at UN Gigiri. Right, and that story sets us up for our conversation tonight. And I want to start with you, uh, Dr. Green. Uh, UNEP is commemorating its 50th uh, anniversary, having been uh, created in 1972. What would you say in these 50 years have been the achievements of this body? Thank you for having me, and I think this is a very, very good uh, question. Uh, a lot has happened over the years and I believe that uh, creation of awareness, the nexus between the environment and uh, matters of agriculture, the awareness creation on matters that need to be done, the, the uh, working out of various activities on matters of forestry and giving it the GDP value uh, to the economy and bringing out these issues in a manner that we are more aware today than we were previously. I think this is a very, very important uh, achievement uh, over the years that we, we, we can be able to talk more on the environment and have uh, healthy discussions that touch on matters of livelihoods and, uh, and uh, relating also to food. I think these, these are great achievements that have been done and particularly when you go to forestry, which is uh, my pet subject, especially on what I and when I was the chairperson of uh, the Kenya Water Towers Agency, you remember the issue of five water towers was started by, by uh, UNEP and uh, it went ahead to become 18 water towers. By the time I was leaving the institution as the founder chairperson, we already were talking of 108 or thereabout uh, water towers in Kenya. As to whether all this has been activated uh, is a different matter, but this is all awareness that has been created over the time. And also bringing out uh, matters of environment to the international community, uh, knowing and appreciating how terrible it's been over the years and the effects of uh, climate change to the, to the various players and communities world over. So, Right. Quite, quite, quite some effort uh, that has been done. And right. Thanks and I want to, to, them. to bring in Mr. Kizito in that uh, as well. Um, you know, there's a lot of global uh, efforts, concerted efforts, in terms of management of issues. Of course, the particular details are varied in the countries. But are you satisfied with the efforts at that global level? Because we've seen that this uh, matters conservation have been prioritized. Do you think we are doing enough? Uh, certainly, yes. We, the global concern for the environment is uh, humongous. It's big. And uh, all nations are taking it up in different ways. And as a country, yes, we recognize that uh, we have tried our best to mainstream issues of uh, climate change, issues of uh, afforestation and reforestation, the restoration of our degraded uh, environments. So those are conversations that uh, as a nation we have picked up significantly and it's a debate that is going on globally. Mm. As recently as uh, last, last year we had the, the COP26 uh, so that uh, we can refocus ourselves on issues of uh, the change in the climate and energize everybody towards doing everything that they can mm. at the lowest level possible to try and mitigate the effects of climate change mm -hmm. and that so the the global effort is uh, quite commendable right yes and dr catherine bringing it home 
uh, here in Kenya. Of course, environmental challenges are global uh, issues to do, uh, you know, with global warming and all that. Are there pressing challenges or challenges that are unique uh, to Kenya itself? Uh, thank you, Sharon, for this opportunity to be able to have this uh, conversation. Uh, yes, uh, from the global perspective, um, we find that um, us having a UNEP here uh, in the country, we've had a lot of uh, benefits and we feel the achievements and uh, they have helped us to address some of the challenges that we face here. One of the challenges that we have, like we have mentioned, is the issue of climate change that is really a big uh, problem that is addressing every aspect of our lives. Mm. And we have to do every effort to be able to address uh, the issues of climate change because they affect everything. They affect our animals, they affect our food production, they affect even infrastructure, like when it rains we have floods, and uh, then we have droughts. So that is really a very big, big, big challenge mm -hmm. that we have, mm -hmm. that we as a country, we need to focus working together with the other partners mm -hmm. at the global level. Mm -hmm. The other challenge we face is the loss of biodiversity. And this is, um, is a whole mix. When we have these climate changes, when we have rain, we have floods. When we have droughts, we lose almost everything. All animals and all plants, we don't have food, we don't have um, uh, uh, maybe feed for our animals. So it's a really, really big uh, challenge. Mm -hmm. And when we lose biodiversity, it means that even the animals or the plants that are good or are uh, native to our uh, ecosystem, they are lost. Uh, so it is a big, big problem that we have to really think of how we, we can address that mm -hmm. for sustainability. Um, then the other challenge we have, um, I'm putting them in yes. a broad way. Yes, and is we go into them. Yeah, actually, yeah, there is the issue of uh, pollution, um, both pollution from uh, the chemicals, from our normal uh, work, maybe from industry or from uh, agriculture as we farm, <coughs> all forms of pollution that we experience or that we, uh, that we see in our daily lives. As, as much as we are doing, we are trying to industrialize, we are trying to put up factories, all these, some of the effects that we have mm. are the wastes that come from such places mm -hmm. and they affect our water, they affect the air, they affect our land. And as such, the land cannot operate or produce at optimal level, mm. or we cannot have safe food for, for consumption. So that is another big, big area. Then we have, coupled with that, is the issue of waste management. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of solid and um, the effluent, mm -hmm. the wastewater that uh, comes from our homes, the wastewater that comes from our factories, the wastewater that comes from the various industrial processes that we may have, mm -hmm. or even just car washing. All these um, uh, also pollute our environment, they pollute our water, they pollute our air, and um, this pose a very, very big challenge that we really need to address. Right. So these are local, mm -hmm. but they are also global in right. nature. Right. Mm -hmm. And let's just begin unpacking uh, these issues that you have brought up that mm -hmm. particularly challenges us, uh, Kenya. Mm -hmm. And I'll start with the last uh, one of waste management, pollution and waste management. I want to bring in uh, Dr. Masharia uh, to speak about this. Um, particularly, uh, how are we challenged by this? One would imagine at this point where there's a lot of research, there's, there's a lot of innovation and technological development. What is our main problem with waste management? Hello. <clears throat> waste management uh, has been a challenge in Kenya for, for a long time. And it is not that we didn't have a law, the law was in place, but uh, 
there has been a challenge whereby uh, our waste uh, management is, has been linear. Even today it is linear. Whereby one generates <coughs> waste in the house and that waste, uh, all of it is put in one, uh, one container, one bin, and then for those who are lucky to have uh, waste hand handlers, uh, the, the trucks come and they put all the waste together and uh, the destination for that waste is the dump site. And this has been uh, a challenge because our dump sites are full. The, they cannot hold any, some of our dump sites cannot hold uh, more waste. They have even spilled over to residential areas. And uh, we, studies have shown that uh, the, what we regard as waste is 60% organic, uh, it is 30% uh, recyclable, and only 10% is others, which 5% uh, we can use to generate energy from waste. And only 5% is, uh, can be destined to uh, lard fields and not dam sites. Uh, so that has been a challenge. And uh, what the government has done now is that we have been able to crack that puzzle. We have been able to come up with a solution. And the solution is uh, we will embrace circular economy. Circular economy is a scenario where we invest in extracting as much value as possible from our resources. And in, the, in this case, our resource is, is the waste. And so uh, our bill is in parliament. It has already passed the National Assembly. It is in Senate. And what it demands is that in our homes, we segregate our waste into three bins. So we have one bin for organic, and then another bin for the dry, the dry waste that is not organic. And then we have the third bin for uh, the special waste, such as uh, masks and any other medically related waste. And this waste, when it leaves the house, it will live in a segregated way. It will not be mixed again. And that waste will now go to a composting facility. And the other waste will go to a material recovery facility. And from there, we will be able to convert that waste into organic manure, organic fertilizer, which can be able to fertilize our farm so that we can generate more food and this contributes to food security. Now for the other dry waste, it needs to be segregated further and sold to the recyclers. And in this way, uh, people all over the country we, we, we will be able to make money through selling those valuable items to the recyclers. This way we will be able to recover uh, 95%. We expect to recover 95% of our waste because it is valuable. It is money we are wasting in dam sites. So if the waste is not contaminated, then it is easy to convert it into, uh, into uh, to extract that value and convert it into, into resource, into money, into employment. And this is where we want uh, the country to go. The law is, uh, as I said, it has passed through uh, the parliament and it is now in Senate. And we expect that this will come to us soon so that we start implementing and transitioning to circular economy. Thank you. Right. right. And do you envision a situation where, because as we see in our estates, uh, you know, in across the towns actually in Kenya that there are people who privately have the businesses of collecting garbage and all that. Does this involve then working together with them to do the separation as you have uh, outlined? Well, segregation will be done at home. Okay. For the waste uh, service providers, they will be required by law that uh, from the time the law becomes enacted, they will not uh, collect waste that is uh, not segregated. Mm -hmm. And so uh, they will, they will, we will involve them in uh, education, uh, educating the, their customers and even giving them bags so that they are able to uh, segregate their, their waste properly at the source. So that the waste they get, even them, they will, it will be so valuable that even them they will want to get into composting business mm. so that they, they make uh, the, 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 the organic fertilizer, the organic manure. Right. They, they will be able to recover this waste and sell it 
to the recyclers by themselves. So, so you, you see a lot of grabbing, a lot of uh, people moving towards uh, getting this way so that they can, they can sell it because right. it's now valuable since it's not contaminated. Right. Interesting perspectives there and uh, what the government is doing, uh, that circular economy concept. We want to take a short break now here on Front Row, but a lot more still to unpack on the discussion of environment conservation and climate change impacts here in Kenya. So you want to stay with us for that discussion. See you shortly.